In this video, we finish up the review of sections 3, 1 to 3, 4. We're going to talk a little bit about slope of a line and calculate a few slopes, give a couple of examples. So slope of a line tells you how steep or how shallow the line is if you're walking uphill, if you're walking uphill very steeply or not so steeply, but it also tells you whether you're walking uphill or downhill. Positive slope means you're going up. Negative slope means you're going down. So the standard definition is to consider two ordered pairs, right? Here's the first point, x1, y1. Here's the second point, x2, y2. And we're going to create a slope by taking the difference of the y's and dividing them by the difference of the x's. Sometimes you'll also see it as change in y over change in x. Those little triangles are actually a Greek letter of the alphabet, delta. So it tells you how much things change or rise over run, right? Rise goes up and down. Run goes left and right. So rise over run tells you how steep or how shallow that line is. So here's a set of ordered pairs, 1, 5, and 3, 11. We're going to try to find the slope of this line. Sometimes it's helpful to line them up underneath each other. So I might put in my 3, 11 over here, and then 1, 5 underneath it. Remember that the y's go on top, the x's go on the bottom. Which one do I choose first? It doesn't matter as long as I'm consistent. So I'll do it both ways. I'll do 11 minus 5, right? That's my change in y over 3 minus 1, that's my change in x. 11 minus 5 is 6, 3 minus 1 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3. What if I did it the other way? What if I decided I wanted to pick the bottom point first? So if I pick the bottom point first, I still have to put the y's on top, so I'll get 5 minus 11, that's a change in y, change in x, 1 minus 3. Okay, so 5 minus 11 is negative 6. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Divide them. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. I still get 3. The one thing I can't do is I can't switch midway. So I can't do 11 minus 5 and then decide to do 1 minus 3 because then I'll end up with the line going the wrong direction. All right, so what is a slope of 3? A slope of 3 means that it goes 3 in the y direction for every 1 that it goes in the x direction. So if you're climbing that hill, it's going to be a pretty steep climb. Right, 3 in the y direction for every 1 in the x direction. That's what a slope of 3 means. Right, here's two other ordered pairs, 3, 1, and negative 5, 7. We want to find the slope between those two points. So maybe we'll do the same thing. Maybe we'll line them up underneath each other. All right, so when I go to find my slope, remember it's change in y over change in x. So if I do my y2 minus y1, that's my changes in y x2 minus x1, that's my change in x. All right, so for the y's, I'll do 7 minus 1. For the x's, I'll do negative 5 minus 3. So 7 minus 1 is 6. Negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. But then I should simplify it. I take a 2 out of top and bottom, and I get negative 3 fourths. It doesn't matter whether the negative sign goes on the top or on the bottom, or you could even put it outside in front of the division bar like this, negative 3 fourths, as long as you don't put both of them as negative. The other thing is if you tried doing it the other way, if you tried doing the 1 minus 7 over 3 minus a negative 5, remember that there's two negatives in here. So 3 minus a negative 5 is the same as 3 plus 5. So you would get a negative 6 on the top, 8 on the bottom. That still simplifies to 3 quarters. All right, look at this one, negative 2, 4, and negative 4, 7. All right, so let's get a little bit of writing space up here. My two ordered pairs, I'll line them up. Negative 2, positive 4, negative 4, positive 7. So my slope, change in y. So I'll do 7 minus 4. Remember the y's are the second coordinate, so 7 minus 4 over negative 4 minus a negative 2. So 7 minus 4 is 3. Down the bottom, you notice that two negatives make a positive. So this gives me negative 4 plus 2. The negative is greater than the positive. So negative 2. Okay, so my slope is negative 3 halves. Look at this one. This one's a little different. I got a 6, 9, and a 6, 1. So let's say I line those up under each other. 6, 9, 
six, one. So my change in y is nine minus one. My change in x is six minus six. So I get an eight on the top and I get a zero on the bottom. Well, that's not good because I can't divide by zero. So we say this expression as I write it is undefined. So the slope of a vertical line is undefined. You can't give me a number that represents that slope. Because slope is change in y over change in x. Well, there is no change in x. So how can I give you a change in y over change in x if there is no change in x? All right, the question down the bottom has negative 2, 4, and 8, 4. So if I look at negative 2, 4, and I look at 8, 4, I calculate 4 minus 4 over negative 2 minus 8. So 4 minus 4 is 0 over negative 10. That actually works, right? Because this says that as the, y, as the x is changed by negative 10, the y's don't change at all. Okay. That means I'm walking on a flat floor. So the slope of a horizontal line is zero. So here's an example. I want to find the slope of the line and figure out what that means in terms of rate of change. So it says when a street vendor sells 40 tacos, profit is 24 bucks. When he sells 75, the profit is 66. So we're figuring, we're assuming in this case, that we're talking about a linear um, relationship between the two of them. So 40, 24, remember the first coordinate is gonna be tacos. The second coordinate is gonna be profit. Okay, same thing happens here. Number of tacos and profit. If I line them up under each other, I get a 40, 24, I get a 75, 66, and then I calculate 66 minus 24, that's my change in Y, over 75 minus 40. 66 minus 24 is 42. On the bottom, 75 minus 40 is 35. Well, I can simplify that, right? I can take a seven out of top and bottom. 42 divided by 7 is 6. 35 divided by 7 is 5. All right. So I could say 6 fifths. Right? That's a perfectly reasonable fraction. I could also turn that into a decimal because we're dealing with money. So maybe if I divide 6 by 5, I get 1.2. So $1.20. So what does that mean? Well, my slope is given as change in y over change in x. So what do the y-coordinates represent in this case? The y-coordinates represent money. Y-coordinates represent dollars. The x-coordinate represents tacos. So when my slope has a 6 on the top and a 5 on the bottom, that's dollars per taco. Which means when I calculate the slope as $1.20, it's $1.20 per taco. Right? Dollars on the top, tacos on the bottom. So it says interpret the slope as a rate of change. What that means is that for every taco he sells, he makes $1.20 in profit. So he makes $1.20 in profit for each taco. Meaning that he's calculated the cost, how much is going to cost him to prepare and to serve this taco. And he has $1.20 to that cost. So for every taco he sells, he makes $1.20 in profit. And that's what the slope tells us. So we are consistent in looking at the ordered pairs. The first one is always the tacos. The second one is always the dollars. So when I calculate my slope, second term over first term, dollars per taco. And that's it.